of all the educational settings that I've been in, this, for a classroom teacher, is about as close as you can get to the pure educational experience that I would like to give my science students. You get to pick what you eat, where you go, what kind of research you want to do. So you think you're going on a science trip, but it's a lot more than that. You also learn to sail, and that's a lot different, and it's a really fun experience. Salish uses inquiry-based learning for all of our programs. Inquiry-based learning is simply student-centered, action-based learning that helps students question, problem-solve, and really engages them with critical thinking. Our goal is maximum student ownership, and we found that by using this model, they're invested. We give them background about what they're interested in studying. We get to know them a little bit. We also get to know the teacher a little bit. It's nice so that when they come to the vessel, they have a little bit of attachment to whoever that person is that goes into the classroom. And we introduce them to the scientific method. So we make observations, we talk about background, we see what they know. Salish began with two years worth of research and conversation with local teachers to find out what was missing in their curriculum. And the overwhelming response that they were looking for were out-of-class experiences that provided an opportunity for real-world hands-on science for their students. I think it's going to be really smelly living with all these people. They come aboard and we do a safety orientation and a main cabin orientation. It's going to help them on the ship and increases their comfort level. I'm kind of nautically challenged, I guess. <laughs> I just love the sailing part of the trip. And I think that's one of the unique things about Salish, uh, as opposed to some outdoor camps, is that it's an environment that there's jobs to be done just to keep the boat going. At any one time, there is probably six or seven kids on the boat that are trimming the sails or navigating or steering the boat. And their jobs are to keep us on course. And so there's a real sense of purpose. And there's also a lot of learning that has to be done. Everyone has something to do and as a result, they are learning about how interdependent they are in the system. So it all ties together as a part of what the, the program is. I mean, it takes a team to sail a boat, and it takes a team of scientists to accomplish what the research is that they're doing. Throughout the expedition, the students are using various pieces of equipment to either prove or disprove their hypothesis. Because it teaches students that it's okay to be wrong, which is a very important part about science better than, oh yeah, I was right, my hypothesis is right, is I reject my hypothesis and this is why. I've just been amazed on the trips that I've gone on with Salish that the staff members know how to communicate with each other and they also are very good at being flexible. So during the trip, if something comes up, they capitalize on a teachable moment immediately. I've seen kids whose personalities were quite different at school suddenly show me a new side that I hadn't seen before, whether it's just kind of like the aha experience of uh, wow, this is really fun and I didn't realize science could be this way. There's some really cool activities they have where they help them learn the skills of sailing and then they have some games, like uh, one of them is a silent tack, where they have to slowly learn how to uh, sail the boat and tack back and forth. And at first they're able to communicate and they have a lot of assistance from the staff. And then they go to another level where they can talk, but the staff doesn't really help them out much. And then they go to another level where they can't communicate at all except with body language. So there's no voices. And uh, it's really a neat experience because the whole boat is silent and it's being steered and things are happening and everybody's communicating. They told us that we were going to take over the ship and they weren't going to help much. They asked for a leader, so I kind of volunteered and then everyone else was like, yeah, Teresa. I had to just kind of organize everything for mooring the boat. First we had to take the sails down and that wasn't too bad except the person at the home couldn't see. First we're just going to clear it so that people, the, our home person can see. Okay. And then I think we should go like slower. We had to decide which buoy to go to and then I had to pick some people to go out in the boat to take the line to attach to the buoy and then throw up to us. We got to the right buoy but it was very stressful. There was a lot going on. I was relieved that it was over and we didn't injure anyone. And I felt proud of myself and of everyone else. It's a big deal. 
One of the great things about the Salish program is that every trip is different. We can work with the teachers to focus on their goals, think about what they'd like the students to get out of the experience. In some cases, they may want to focus on journal writing or poetry, language of the sea. It provides an opportunity for the students to enrich their experience on the boat. When I was captain on the last day, it was pretty hard because you had to communicate with the people in the front when you were way in the back. It was very powerful because you're like in charge of everybody. So many programs like Salish, what's missing in those programs is the kids will come to a center for a field trip. And so it's a totally out of school experience. And they don't connect it with science, they don't connect it with school at all. And we want to promote science in schools and science in life. And so they have this experience that's not just a three-day trip and then we never see them again. And we go back into the classroom for synthesis and it's awesome. And I think part of Salish's goals is to science is cool, it's fun, it happens here, it also happens in the classroom. And it happens in life all the time. You always go through the scientific method. You come home, your lights are out, you think, why are the lights out? Then you say, oh, maybe the power's out. And then you go and test it. And then you analyze your data and you reevaluate. No, the power's not out. I blew a breaker. It happens every day, all the time, constantly. You're always going through the scientific method. I think if you ask these kids the next year, some of them will definitely say, I now know why science is out there and I know what a scientist does and what it's like to do science in the real world. And for some of them, it's kind of like a career door may have opened. The thing I'll always remember when I look back on this trip is the first day and when we got on the boat and just getting accustomed to everything. Looking at zooplankton under microscopes. Going on the hikes and stuff on the islands, that was really cool. It really made me think about all the different things that I could do. I will never be afraid of the rain again. <laughs> just being on a sailboat is a great experience and I would do it over again if I had the chance.